All right. Let's talk about some exploded uh, children. Let's talk about, well, this, this is an interesting one. Yeah, because this is not usually the sort of disaster which occurs at schools. Um, <laughs> normally, that's just shooting. Yeah, this is yeah, the thing that we're going back to once Joe bans all cool firearms, is we're going back to this kind of school disaster. Yes. So, um, w welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast with slides about engineering disasters. If you're confused where the slides are, they're on YouTube. If you're listening to this in a podcast app and you've been very confused about the slides part, <laughs> like the link is in the description <laughs> to see the slides. Okay. Anyway, I I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. Uh, I am Alice uh, Caldwell Kelly. I am the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her. You forgot the pronouns. Ah. I forgot the pronouns. Oh, Mine are he and him. Join, Damn, join had, the SMP, Roz. Whole... <laughs> 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 oh, is it my turn? Yeah, go. Oh, hey. My name is Liam Anderson, and my pronouns, <laughs> see that, Roz? My pronouns <laughs> yeah. are he and him. Ooh. And, 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 and what do you see on the screen in front of you? Uh, is a school yeah. building. Um, well, well, lots kind of, of half people, of one. Yeah, half of a school building. Yeah, actually, it's... a very small portion of a school building. <laughs> I see a lot of people standing around. They're they're not attending classes or looking at the football game. They, there well, seems to be them, some wreckage. Some of them were attending classes oh. very recently oh, prior dear. to this photo. Oh. Um, so like a lot of bad stuff happens at school, right? We all know this. Yeah, it resembles Maybe. a prison. Yes, exactly. Yes, a kid jail. Yes. Ho ho, wee wee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shaving my entire head very closely to make this point. Yes. Uh, it's like if it's, it's, it's school is like the prison. Everything is uh, like the prison. <laughs> you just made Foucault <laughs> like smoking. Austrian there. Uh, yeah. That, that's, that's not good. Yeah, the school so, is so, like the prison and so on. And <laughs> ideology. <laughs> yes. Wait, do I just call Zizek so, Austrian there? Yeah, People are going to be yeah, so yeah, mad at me. Yeah, he's, he's like he's Slovakian, he, he, he trans, or Slovenian, he, one of those. He transcends nationality. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's Yugoslav. The being of poor Zizek. Yeah, that's a good point. He is a Yugoslav. That is basically the, mo the most internationalist anyone has been. That's <laughs> true. So, like, you know, at school, bad stuff happens. Like, maybe the teacher assigns you too much homework. Or you get or shot. Like maybe, Maybe you, you fail an exam. Maybe, maybe you get, get shot by a bully. Maybe yeah. you get shot. Yeah, maybe, maybe you get shot. Maybe you get shot. shot at, Stop beating around I mean, the shooting bush. We, we've been <laughs> well. We've been doing very well this year. And I don't know why you need to do about school shootings. Actually, oh yeah, because you closed all the schools. No, you, you actually don't need to say beating around the shooting bush because beating around the bush is a shooting metaphor already. Wow, thanks, uh, Alice. I didn't know that. Yeah, you you yeah. like physically beat a bush with uh, with sticks to drive uh, birds out of it, so people can shoot them. Biden's gotta get the kids back in school so they can get shot by each other again. You know, <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interest. An interesting uh, comparison would be to figure out how many kids got killed by COVID versus how many kids would have been killed by school shooters. Have a leaderboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of like neat viruses just getting really mad and trying to like outdo COVID and how many kids it's killed. It's the national debt clock, but for but for kids. Man, the national this debt school, clock's so lame. This school has gone forty five days without a mass shooting event. <laughs> well, it's a month and a half. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Really making progress. So, you know, another bad thing that can happen at school in addition to being shot is maybe the school catches fire or something, but usually, usually one thing that schools don't do is randomly explode out of nowhere. Yeah, you want to design against that. Yeah, it's, it's, there's not a lot of stuff in schools that can explode. Like, uh, maybe you have a, a, there's a chemistry, chemistry lab, lab maybe. Chemistry lab, labs. That's probably about it. Uh, it's about it. Yeah. Like the, in the cafeteria the, that the day. The quiet kid yeah. in the back of the classroom. Uh, grease fire. Grease fire. Grease. Yeah, you could have a grease fire. That's not an explosion, though. Okay, I'm sorry. I was trying to think outside the box, asshole. Uh, well, maybe you just have a bunch of propane tanks lying around for one reason or another. This is Texas oh. we're talking about. It's a good point. Yeah, gotta gotta have the school facilitated tailgating. Um, <laughs> 
So today's story is the story of a school that did explode out of nowhere. Oh boy. We're going to talk, the, uh, talk about the New London, Texas high school explosion of 1937. Well, we're back in Texas, our favorite place. Yeah, why what do we if, only yeah. go to Texas when stuff explodes? Because that's where all the big explosions lot. are. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas, including oh. the explosions. And the body count. Mm. Yes. What is the body count on this one? Let's just front load that one for once. Uh, at least 295? Oh, you know it's bad when you get an at least in there. Yes. Well, we were trying to find bits and shit, like... Yeah. The people looking like the end of an Unreal Tournament match, that's, <laughs> that's gonna make it hard for the corner. <laughs> but first, we have to do the goddamn news. I really hope I have this drop queued up right. E. E. e no, I don't. E. e, e. Close! Close. Yeah, very close. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Hold on. Let me get the news. So, so like, there. A Thanks, whole, Alice. A whole bunch of redditors mm -hmm. uh, decided it was time to buy all the GameStop uh, stock. And um, now GameStop is valued at an absurdly high amount. Twenty-five or something. <laughs> They've stopped so public trading on it like five <laughs> times now. Welcome. Stop interfering <laughs> with the market. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the free of the markets, the free of the people. Let's go. This is tyranny. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like a whole bunch of hedge funds are going to go bust because they all had short positions and they can't make the margin calls. It Whoa. might. It might bankrupt the Mets, which is so fucking funny because the CEO of the Mets uh, tried to bail out the original hedge fund, Melvin Capital, Melvin, that got yeah. that lost their uh, that lost their shirt in this one. Two point eight billion Wait. dollars. Yeah, he he, he put in two point eight billion dollars and it was wiped out in half an hour. So oh oh no oh uh, oops <laughs> wait which Met. Like the Mets, the New York the, Mets. Oh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Ah, no, no, damn. no. The one that has Mr. Matt. The one that like uh, had oh. all the cops. Like Art, Stephen Cohen is who you're talking about. The owner of Thank the you. Mets. Yeah, the, the Mets. 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 Yeah. yeah, there's. Uh, there's I have to there's, go to the Mets. Mets. Can, you, <laughs> can you imagine the two of them have to merge? <laughs> Meet the Met. Meet the Mets. The Mets. Steep Step right, right, up right up and, and greet, greet them. them. Yeah. yeah. I said uh, steep right up, too, so I'm on to fantastic fair. form. We're all doing well today, yeah. Tom so, Payne, who I know is going to listen to this podcast, that one specifically was for you. I'm glad they signed JT again. Uh, <laughs> and so now the, they're um, going to go bankrupt because of GameStop, of all things. Of ga yeah, ga gamers have risen up. Yeah. To be anti-Semitic, Stephen Cohen is Jewish. I see you. I see you. You will hear about this at the next Cabal meeting. We're gonna kidnap so many kids. My favorite thing is the the Wall Street Bets subreddit that spawned this is absolutely it, losing their goddamn shit. Absolutely losing their goddamn shit. The, the, what they've performed on GameStop is called a short squeeze, right? Where they, these hedge funds were shorting. If you don't know what a short is, it's where you sort of bet that a stock will lose value. Uh, it was short in GameStop, and they just sort of called their bluff and kept buying and buying and buying, and they will continue to buy for as long as people let them to uh, let them do that. Um, the the motto on Wall Street bets at the moment is uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna bleep the slur, and I fucking hope this bleeper works. That we can s longer than they can stay solvent. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I know what's. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. what the slur is. Unfortunately, I fit on WSB. <laughs> uh, I I do appreciate the fact the the sort of pearl clutching of you know you might think this is funny, but what happens to a, a stock you really like? And I'm just like, there is no company that this could happen to where I wouldn't think this is fucking hilarious. Yeah, what if they yes. do this to the, the also, good hedge funds that like, we all like? I have to say, we're in a weird position economically. Where, like, because people are trapped inside during the pandemic, 
we're basically rooting for the pandemic, at least on some like not literally actively rooting for the pandemic, but it's good for us as a podcast that y'all motherfuckers have nowhere to go. Oh, yeah. We're and, a like, growth yes. industry. My my dad uh, before he retired was a bankruptcy attorney. So like he every time like the stock market crashed, he was like, oh, boy, new clients. Like, can't wait. <laughs> so you have to give him the fucking happy merchant voice. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, he has an extremely nasally voice. <laughs> he, I love my dad very much, but he sounds sometimes like a Jewish caricature. <laughs> Uh, but, but like my other favorite thing about this is that like it's such a calculated fuck you to the stock market that they're buying mm. uh, the stocks that are like demonstrably of the least value. Like, GameStop, <laughs> BlackBerry, <laughs> uh, Blockbuster was another one. Which because Blockbuster's still trading, I didn't fucking know that, but it is. Yeah, and I it, didn't think it Blockbuster went up, was trading. Uh, that was bizarre. At, to learn time, that. at time of recording, seven hundred and seventy four percent before they closed wow. trades. Uh, and <laughs> and AMC moved movie theaters so <laughs> i understand amc uh actually managed to raise a lot of capital in december so Long, that valuation is a, yeah a mm. little little more justified but still I, extremely dumb i do like the idea that like wall street bets just flailing from industry to industry is going to prop up companies just as long as they can <laughs> i just like Fuck these people pearl clutching and being like, it's not funny. We have you know, there are there are real people, and to them I say, Good job. You too will get a fourteen hundred dollar stimulus. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you pull yourself up by the bootstraps, you too can get fifteen dollars an hour in twenty twenty five. Yeah. Like you this know? is the thing. This is, right? this is what you this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. Yeah, no, not not fucking. I think we should also say not a lot of sympathy for Wall Street bets themselves either. Like full support no. in their quest to like do a f some fucking financial suicide bombing. But like, it, not great people over there. Ve very few people are getting into this and just being like, "Oh yeah, I used to be poor and now I'm I'm rich off of this." A few might, but for the most part, it's people like it's going to be people who put in upwards of five hundred thousand dollars in the first place who are making yeah. real money off of this, and it's. Like the thesis that I, I I I'm coming to, and I'm gonna you you'll hear me explain this on the next Trash Future, is that it's very much like storming the U.S. Capitol. In that, in both cases, you just have a kind of a handful of people who know what they're doing riding a mob of idiots in to do something totally unexpected yes. that was much yes. easier than anybody thought it would be because you thought somebody was supposed to be securing this, and it turns out nobody is. But on the other hand, it seems like it's going to be a lot harder to put the Wall Street bets guys in jail. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. I so far, find a way. Don't worry. <laughs> this is going to be the biggest uh, like change in stock market regulation since the fucking thirties, and it's all going to be to make sure this never happens again. Wait until GameStop gets back down to thirty-five and short them. Give me yeah. my two thousand dollars. Not six hundred plus fourteen hundred. Not twelve hundred. <laughs> two thousand dollars okay <laughs> yes like and, and they're all just pissing and moaning and just like eh, why are they doing this it's just like because people are bored because you ruined everything so fuck you because fuck fucking up the markets is funny my favorite stimulus tweet was this inauguration looking kind of fancy for a guy who owes me two thousand dollars i saw that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just fucking fuck it. Repo shit from the White House. Just back a truck up there and start pulling copper wire out of the walls. Uh, that'd be funny. <laughs> just uh, just show up with a big uh, big rider truck. Yeah, I'm, or, I'm here uh, to get like two thousand dollars worth of computers. Yeah, someone uh, so, so give me give me that. Oh, good, uh, I can get one RTX thirty eighty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this. Uh, painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, oh, that's probably the, too the, grand. The, the, the Met garbage sale, or garage sale, the Met's gotta raise the money. You can be <laughs> to, to Mr. Met, too. <laughs> <laughs> they had to sell Mr. Met. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever seen Thoroughly Modern Millie? It's kind of like that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, if, if you got rich off of GameStop, well done, please send me $50,000, because I need it. Uh, oh, this is the transgender uh, agenda we're always hearing so much about. It's fucking mutual aid, right? If it, You can't yes. call yourself a trans ally unless you've sent me $50,000. I've sent you, like, $10. Well, thank you, right. yeah. 
Yeah. You know, that, that's uh, forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety dollars <laughs> short of being trans ally. Can, can you send me an ID that says trans ally so I could whip it out? When people I will tell absolutely you print you. I will absolutely print you or anyone else a trans ally ID. Actually, I will charge you for that one. Like the Pennsylvania Secret Service ones, that still pay what you want. But like the trans ally one, no, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> Solidarity forever. Yes. In other. News. Money. News. <laughs> they put, they're, putting, they're putting Harriet Tubman on the uh, fourteen dollar bill. Yeah, since it's, you know, fourteen Fuck. is the same as twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, that's fucking <laughs> depressing. I mean, yeah, I. I don't know. It's not really my place to have any feelings about it one way or the other, but something about it does kind of rub me the wrong way to just be like, yeah, no, hey, you used to be a commodity, now you're on the commodity. Progress. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's really weird because like, they seem to be really prioritizing this. I mean, it was something that was about to happen at the end of the Obama mm. term, and now they're like, okay, we're back in office, Let's let's get this thing going. It'll be a big I guess some kind of publicity feel wins. Good. Yeah, this was feel good. This this was America's moment for like racial healing or whatever, and nobody was asking for this. Nobody remembered that this happened. I can't think of a single person who like their priority when Biden got in was yeah, we're going to pressure him to do the Harriet Tubman twenty dollar bill thing. You know, actually, I think it should also say Black Lives Matter on the twenty dollar bill. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna result in racial harmony right there. <laughs> um, painting it on the streets evidently wasn't enough, but if we just do it enough, yeah. We well, what we've got to do, things, what we've got to do is we've got to do only gestural politics, but we've got to do them so hard they work. Every street in America <laughs> is now named Black Lives Matter Plaza, and we're going to keep doing this until we black like it. Oh, it's like being in Atlanta, where everything is peach tree. Yeah, uh, I do kind you of like confused it. mailmen driving in circles <laughs> trying as, to get people as, their as, mail. As, as mad as I get about you know platitudes mm. and, and 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 gesturing and all that, that would be fucking hilarious. Just like every interstate is now Black Lives Matter interstate. Watching racists just Mussolini themselves <laughs> off bridges, like I don't, you know, it would be worth it to never go anywhere. The the the, the one thing is, this is a big win for Andrew Jackson, um, actually, because of course he he hated the concept of currency. Uh, putting oh, on yeah. a twenty dollar bill is 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 like just absurd. I assume you could have probably hooked up a turbine to his body. Spinning in his grave in the power of a city the size of Albany. Um, <laughs> it's going to be weird, uh, like when this enters pop culture, though. Like you can't talk about having like a stack of Tubmans easily now. But at some point, that's going to change, and that's going to be fucking wild. I don't know. I feel like they call me to uh, they call me Tubby because I'm loaded with twenties. Actually, kind of works. <laughs> As opposed to work, they call yeah. me Tubby because of my diet and my drinking problem. <laughs> Try, trying to bribe somebody. Have you met my friend Harriet Tubman? Like this feels unethical. I don't even want to do this <laughs> yeah, bribe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> um. But anyway, that is the news. The goddamn news. The news. All now right. we got some Google Maps. I know, right? Let's talk about the town of New London, Texas. Home of a building that looks like a big serif E. Yes. Jesus Christ. Is, do the E really? That's when you don't do the E drop? Oh, fuck. E. Are you joking? E. E. There, there we go. E. I had it to hand, too, and I completely. Oh, God. I like that. A good ten percent of this town is a high school football field. It's a lot I mean, bigger it, than ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is more Texas than that? I saw Friday Night Lights. So, New London, Texas, is this sort of one horse town about halfway between Dallas and Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, right? fuck! Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they uh, they originally called the town London, but they got a post office, and the postmaster said. There's already a London in Texas, so they were like, "All right, it's New London now." <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Kimball County. <laughs> um, and 
one of the things about this town, I mean, this is just this is just a regular small rural town. Nothing especially special about it, except of course it's in Texas, which meant in 1930 they discovered oil. Earl. Oil. Earl. So they discovered oil in, in Rusk County, which is where New London is, in 1930, and that boosted, you know, the town's tax revenues. Also the also, congestion. Look at that traffic. I was about to say, yeah, I don't know if that's like a junkyard or what. Looking um, pretty good for a junkyard, though, isn't yeah. it? This is true. I think everything just looked better back then. Mm, maybe. You know? Yeah, people had to make stuff look better because everything was in black and white, so you couldn't make out of it. Detail, yeah. <laughs> so, in addition to boosting tax revenues, a lot of these oil wells were drilled on county-owned land, right? Smart. The, the county had direct revenue through leases. Right? Yeah. P Petrostates, so, uh, Saudi yes. Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Rusk County, Texas. Yes, this is uh, Petro County. <laughs> um, so as a result of this, the county had a whole bunch of money to play around with, and rather than building, I don't know, a big island in the shape of a palm or something like that, uh, they decided they were going to spend it on good schools. Ah, uh, right? boring. Do, yeah. Give, do, give <laughs> a fucking giant <laughs> skyscraper. I, mean, I want a ski Owl jump. County. I want a ski jump. <laughs> God, if only somebody was doing a podcast about those Gulf State mega projects we like yeah, so much. Yeah, you dickheads yeah. beat us to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> that's only that's only partially about Gulf State mega projects. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, everyone's going to get their own take in on it eventually. So, we may all just have the same guest on on, yes. know, on, I, on every podcast. Um, <laughs> Who is Seamus so, Malakafsali? I am Guy <laughs> Incognito. <laughs> I, I am three three Seamuses in a trench coat. Uh, <laughs> back to back Seamus guess. Yes. Just acquiring um, infinite Shamai. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and this is this is during the depths of the depression that they decide we're gonna splurge on schools, right? Because they just have that much money. So they decide to build New uh, London High School, right? Obviously, R really? London High School before explosion. <laughs> yeah, help, helpfully <laughs> captioned. Also, is it just called London High School? Did the, the, someone was really sore about that new London <laughs> yeah, thing. Right? And yes. fuck you, Kimball County. We're gonna <laughs> name our high school, and you can come down here just shooting at the rival Texas town. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's Texas. They it's probably Texas. did do that. Yeah, <laughs> so true. They build this. They build this. It's actually another uh, town just south of New London called Old London. Are you oh, fucking fuck kidding me? Her? Yeah, so, I, it's a weird name for a building. London High School before explosion. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. So this is London High School. It's a big E-shaped building, e, e, right? E, 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 e. You know, you get to sort of vaguely Richardson Romanesque detailing. You know, a uh, lot of pixels, unfortunately. Um, they, they, um, you know, uh, constructed this out of steel and concrete. You know, it's not a brick structure or a wooden structure. It's all steel and concrete. Uh, in 1932, and it cost a whopping one million dollars. That's upwards yeah. of like two million dollars now. That's many mm -hmm. Xboxes. Yeah, I think that's like eighteen million dollars now. Technically, upwards of two million dollars. Yes. They built this uh, school on a slope, right? You can sort of see this uh, is sloping down here, right? So there's an extra story back here. So there's this big crawl space along the front of the building, right? Mm -hmm. um, Years later, the, uh, that would be where they would put like media studies classrooms and stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, they had a, you know, this is a 21 acre campus. They had a football field with lights, right? They had, there was also an elementary school on the campus. There was, you know, the high school building. There was a gymnasium and a separate building. Uh, their football team was called, can you guess? Pioneers. Oh, uh, the Wildcats. The Wildcats. Oh, Wildcats, I guess. Oh, yeah. Wildcatting, which is an oil thing, right? Oh, yeah, it's an oil fuck, thing. I just yeah. got that, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this, the school's campus was larger than the town it was in. <laughs> in fact, it still is. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't this the first... Football field to have electric lights in the state of Texas, at least high school. 
I do I not know. I believe so. Jeez. That oil money. Also, I like that in a previous slide, Roz, you have the notes, oil were discovered. <laughs> oil, oh, yeah. Oil were discovered. <laughs> I do... I, I, I do like the the how they it's called Texas sweet crude because they used to taste it. And yes. I just I think we need to get back to that. What just you know, tasting get oil? Back, get get back to real America. Just sticking your tongue just straight down a well. <laughs> do, do not do not do this. Um, Tell me how to pleasure a woman. Crude oil is very bad for you. You're not the boss of me. Tastes fucking great. We're, in co- yeah, we're incorporated together, asshole. We're a co-op. <laughs> T- tastes great, less filling. <laughs> Oil light. <laughs> 85 calories, and then we could have an obnoxious oh, TV advert talking about how we're uh, we're the most delicious light oil. Mm. So while they were constructing the school, the school board decided to sub out the heating system specified by the architect, Uh-oh. which was a central boiler which uh, would send steam to uh, radiators throughout the building with a different system, which was 72 gas heaters throughout the building in different rooms, right? Why would you do this? I actually don't know. It might have been slightly cheaper. You get better zone control that way. Acre high school. Probably. Yeah. So, like, I guess yeah, if you have like a county with six kids in it and you're only using one corner of the school, you're not paying to heat all point. of it. But they like locked Wall Street bets. Oh no. Fascists. Fascists. Bizarre. Bastard. Okay, we, they, they haven't done anything wrong. Please, Mr. Putin, <laughs> I'm calling on you to, to free my people who live under the, the jackboot of tyranny. Um Ah, shit, that was another thing we could have talked about is uh, Navalny and how he's a fascist. Oh, Oh, God. Well, I mean, in Russian politics, nobody isn't a fascist, except maybe, like, (laughs) Sergei Odaltsov, and, like, he's so irrelevant, nobody's even tried to kill him, so... (laughs) It's it's, it's incredible, you look at, like, that country, and you, you look at all the potential people who could be running it, and you're like, yeah, Putin is the least bad option by like a huge margin. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's true anymore, is the worst part. I'm genuinely like, oh, God, I don't know. What's cool seeing all the cops getting pelted with snowballs, though? Yeah, that ruled. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> so, as a result of installing the 72 heater system, this crawl space was entirely full of just a maze of gas pipes, right? Oh, good. But they didn't really do any other alterations to the design, like, say, adding some ventilation into that crawl space. Yeah, you don't right? need to do that. It's fine. Just have an oil it's, it's refinery no under the school. Just, just make sure it <laughs> doesn't leak and you're fine. You're Delta. <laughs> We're teaching your kids how to become prosperous. All right, kids, this is a uh, gas pipe working class. <laughs> We're going to teach you about gas pipes. Um, All right, here's a end, welding ring. Get in there, champs. <laughs> you enter a room with a, with a four-foot high ceiling that the interior looks like the Windows pipes screensaver. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Augmented reality welding uh, training course. So anyway... The gas was originally brought in from a commercial gas line operated by the United Gas Company, right? Until January of 1937, when the school board found a sneaky way to reduce their heating costs. Oh dear. We make our own gas. Well. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. (laughs) So we need to talk a little bit about uh, oil extraction here. Um something called residual gas, right? When you drill for oil, it's not just oil that comes out of the well. You know, there's, there's stuff trapped in the pockets down there. There's a lot of times there's water, right? Sometimes you get like sand and silt mixed in the oil, which is annoying. Uh, all kinds, all kinds of, you know, I wouldn't, I, I would say nasty stuff can be in there, but there's nothing in there that's nastier than the oil itself. Um, <laughs> Additionally nasty stuff. Yes. Yeah, bonus, bonus nastiness. Bonus nasty, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to our OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the very common byproducts is natural gas, right? So natural gas, mostly methane, you know, your CH4, Plus some other hydrocarbons, you can get propane, you can get some other stuff in there. 
and and other nasty stuff. Sometimes you get sulfur. Sometimes you get uh, weird like acids in there, right? Um, and in order to use natural gas commercially, you, you have to like purify it and make it meet certain specifications. So it's almost all methane. Um, and natural gas, uh, you know, it's it's a useful fuel. It burns much cleaner than other hydrocarbons like oil and coal. Produces less CO two for heating value, right? Uh, one one of the interesting side effects about the recent like boom in uh, natural gas power production is that it's actually caused a net reduction in CO two emissions from the power st- uh, generation sector. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that's that's obviously like that's not that, that you're still burning natural gas. Oh. Also, there's lots of leaks in systems, which and since natural gas is a very, very, it, it's something like ten times more potent than CO two as a uh, oh. greenhouse gas. You know, is sort of a is mixed bag. So, here, so, right? so what you're telling me <laughs> is that every city building game has lied to me when it has a natural gas power plant as the compromise option for when you can't decide between going with coal and uh, nuclear or renewable energy? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> but there are some, there are more problems with natural gas, one of which is that it's very difficult to store. Right, because you got to store it like in sort of as a compressed gas. Um, it tends to heat up in pipelines, which uh, means you got to keep them cool, right? Um, so if you're taking the stuff out of the ground, you need to do something with it immediately, right? Start piping it off to customers, uh, you know, get it processed, all this stuff, right? Um, and another issue, of course, is that this gas is colorless and odorless. We'll get to that in a second. So in the 1930s, there wasn't a huge market for natural gas, right? I mean, you know, it was there for residential heating and cooking, right? Um, But it wasn't like being used for power generation or anything. This is before we discovered you could make electricity using fossil fuels. And instead we used, you know, these these old-fashioned things like dams. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I don't think even coal... I don't think coal power plants really took off until like the 1960s and after the discovery of what? lots of coal in the uh, Powder River Jesus, Basin. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> you think of coal power generation as being something that somebody started in like the 19th century. It's like, no, like the, usually the, the really big power plants were all hydroelectric. Fuck, coal man. was like a relatively recent thing. Yeah. <laughs> So we've just had like 50 years of doing this shit as like an interstitial when we could have more or less jumped from dams yes. to dams and man splits the atom. Um, yes. A- a- and instead we just decided to like veer off into killing everything. Wonderful photo I just uh, finally rediscovered recently uh, of uh, oh, the no. Pennsylvania Railroad delivering the shipping port nuclear reactor on a, behind, uh, with a steam train. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, they're both they're These both they're wild. both steam engines, right? When you get down to this, it. is true. Yes, well, that's true. Well, no, they're both they're both heating elements of a boiler. Oh, I guess so. Shut up, shut up, Greg. <laughs> yeah, because the uh, the the nuclear reactor would be powering a turbine, not an engine. Fine, it, I guess if you, you want to be specific no, about it's it, fine. it's fine. No, just, <laughs> it it, it, it uses steam no to perform useful podcast. work, but Why it's not a steam wow, engine because not, <sighs> we can't have any fun. Yeah, yes, just a no fun Rosnia. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should flare off more natural gas if we're just going to fuck everything up anyway. Because yeah, like, I got into that. Just I like I like maximum chaos all the time. Plus, it looks kind of metal. Like just the yeah, it, it is pretty metal. It, just yeah. real sort of Gatsby ash heap vibes to just drive past a giant fucking flare stack. Oh yeah. Well, in the 30s, there was not a huge market for natural gas. Again, we weren't using it for power generation, and we didn't have a really robust uh, natural gas pipeline network, right, to carry away the gas somewhere where you could use it. So a lot of times in, you know, little oil extraction operations, they just flare it all off, right? Cool. And this was the case in Rux County. There were several pipelines which carried the natural gas to a central flare stack from the oil wells, right? So this 
this town, New London, had actually two separate gas systems. One for residential and commercial use, and one for flaring. Yeah, one right? that just goes to nothing. Um, yes. It's cool. Also, uh, you, you see this occasionally, I've mentioned this on this pod before, but um, a couple of Scottish oil refineries, the Shell ones up here, have just been flaring off natural gas, because they can't sell it. Uh, so sometimes capitalism just leads you to the same thing. It's cool. I was about to say, you know, how much, uh, how much gas would you use if it were free? Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, it turns out is less than infinite, which is what economists would predict. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually just run, I run my heater full blast in the summer because gas is free. <laughs> <Surely I'm laughs> my yeah. apartment is 930 degrees Kelvin. Yeah. I, I, I run my own private flare stack just because I like it. Oh, because it's cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to look up what 930 is, Kelvin. Oh, good. It's 1,214 degrees Fahrenheit. So that just oh, so, worked. So a Texas summer. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, uh, what was I going to say? Um, that a boy. You know, they make, they make uh, natural gas powered air conditioners. <laughs> lots of stuff lots of stuff can be powered by natural gas if you decide you really want it this do is that. easily um, my favorite genre of machine is something that is powered by something that technically works but shouldn't like a hand cranked flashlight for instance or like it's it's the same to me as expressing yeah. stuff in units that are technically like correct but make no sense like what's the sun in calories Liam and I looked at uh, a couple of apartments when we were searching for the uh, a, a while back, where, um, and they, uh, at least one of them had a natural gas washer and dryer. Oh, yes, it did. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's such a fucking Soviet vibe, too. You know, like you should be Soviet vibe apartment. Yeah, he, it was, you simply uh, load it, it, your it clothes totally into Soviet. a clino mat, and uh, yeah, the finest natural gas from Baku will just fucking steam them clean. I mean, hey, well, dry cleaning you know is dry cleaning just gasoline. Is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just they just soak your clothes in gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it all just petroleum products all the way down? I feel like I'm trapped. Oil's I, cheap. I I feel like yeah. I've fallen asleep in like chemistry class, and I've like I've fallen asleep and I'm subliminally trapped in like watching a film that's like, could you imagine a world without petroleum? No, this is the issue with petroleum products: is that they're really good. Oh boy, this this is the problem about with with getting off of oil is on account of oil is very good and can do many useful and things. Tastes fucking <laughs> great. It does. And less filler. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is gasoline but diet uh, crude oil? Yeah, and it helps you maintain my uh, trim my figure. figure. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Trim figure, baby. <laughs> Smelt. <laughs> All right, so when you do a commercial natural oh, gas this system, it's going to be more right? organic chemistry. <laughs> I I didn't go I didn't go very far into it. Thank you. Um, what what one of the things is you know why why would you have two separate systems? Why not just have one system since all that natural gas is going to waste? More valves. Use it for Pain in the houses. ass. Yeah, we don't like to do valves. Well, one of the problems is residential gas has like quality controls, right? You need certain purity, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, another one is that residential gas has to have an odorant in there called tert butyl thiol. Butyl thiol. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's fine. That's this you majored in here. civvy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one of the problems is natural gas, of course, again, colorless, odorless. So you can't tell if it's building up in your house, like, you know, if you left the stove on, right? So now with the odorant, you can tell if natural gas is building up in your kitchen because your kitchen smells like rotten eggs. At which point you can then turn the stove off and then open a window so that your kitchen doesn't blow up. Yeah, which is ideal. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it, it, usually I prefer not to have my kitchen blow up because I like to make food there. <laughs> If my kitchen blew up, I would have to get takeout all the time. To be fair, you're just going to do it with a 1681 vodka anyway, so. Uh, well, that was, uh, that was, that was a while, long time ago. How did you do that? With the microwave. So I was making a vodka sauce, right? Okay. And this is, uh, this was relatively early on when I was cooking, uh -huh. you know, sort of learning to cook, right? Sure. And 
you know, one of the things I, as I was like, you know, I, I made, I made the chicken in there, right? Took that out of the pan. Um, then I was going to start the sauce. And one of the things is I thought, you know, maybe I should, I should try deglazing all this, all this nice fond on the bottom of the pan here. Oh boy. And so I tried doing that by adding the vodka in. Which of course you need a fire. vodka, vodka, vodka sauce, sauce, <laughs> yes. sauce. So there's, you know, probably a good three, four feet of fire there. Um, and I was like, oh shit, I've killed the soul. <laughs> um, but yeah, it actually, this is WTYP it, from Beyond the Grave, actually. Yeah. Well, it burned itself out fairly quickly, and yeah. all it really did was melt the microwave. Well, a little you bit. Off our microwave <laughs> a little bit, but yeah. So, um, you know what? The sauce turned out pretty good. It was good sauce. So, mm, can and it did deglaze the pan. So, mission accomplished. <laughs> Works as advertised. About this. I would do it outside <laughs> the next time, because it also set the fire alarm off. Not, not a bug feature working as intended. Although the fire alarm went off after the fire had died down, which is very strange. Dude, I'm living in my house now. We cook, and just every single fucking time it sets the fire alarm off, and I just want to go oh full frat house and disconnect all the fire alarms. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> shake hands with danger. No, I can see the fire. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was about to say, I can see the fire is over here. The fire alarm can shut off because I know where the fire is. <laughs> I have been alerted to the fire. I don't need noise. Oh, you to just also meant temporarily me while annoyed. you cook. I see. Yeah. Okay. No, th this fire is under control. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun natural gas fact. Okay. If your local power plant runs on coal or natural gas, using natural gas to heat your house or cook is actually more environmentally friendly than an electric stove or heating system because electricity has energy losses in transit and natural gas does not. Huh. Yeah. And also, you know, gas stoves are better. And anyway, at some point, I'm going to have to fight Matt Brunig, you know, next time, next time he suggests that he's coming for our gas stoves. Um, <laughs> you, you don't like an induction hob at all? No, I want some goddamn fire. <laughs> <laughs> I want fire that I use to heat the pan where I cook the things. But anyway, so this, this residual gas pipeline that ran through the town was full of uh, unprocessed and impure gas of wildly varying quality, right? And it had no odorants. So using it for residential or commercial stoves and heaters would not be a smart thing to do. But oh boy. the thing was, it was free. Don't make an unwise thing to do a free thing to do. <laughs> yes. So lots of churches, homes, and businesses made illegal taps into the residual <laughs> gas pipeline. Yeah, this natural gas <laughs> is highly illegal. Mm -hmm, yeah. Highly illegal. <laughs> and they just started using the nasty, shitty gas instead of the good gas. Sure. Oh, hell yeah. Now, I mean, if you're making your own illegal gas tap, you gotta know what you're doing is insanely dangerous, right? You live in Texas, how dangerous could it be? Oh, I guess so. But like, you can't be yeah. like, nobody knew gas exploded, it was the fucking 30s! <laughs> oh yeah, well, every, everyone knows that this is, you know, not, not smart. You know, this is not a, but you know, you, you just say, hey, uh, if you have a buddy who like, works on, you know, everyone works in the oil fields, they know how to do hot taps. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, you know, this very good well-funded school with lots of money decides, yeah, sure, why not? And they make an illegal tap into the residual gas line in January of 1937. What? But they have... What else were they going to spend that money on? More textbooks about, like, race theory or something? I probably, uh... Uh... Oh, we, 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 need to, we spent all of this surplus on eugenics heads, so, like... <laughs> I, I we we you know, wanted to bring in a visiting lecturer on phil phrenology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly, you know, they have to worry a lot more about adjusting heaters and stuff like that. But the scheme goes off goes off without a hitch. They cancel their gas contract and they start using the residual gas from the Parade Oil Company, right? And Parade Oil Company, you know. 
this is sort of a, a, a an open secret in the community, right? That you know, a parade oil company just sends this gas to the flare stack, and you're not supposed to tap into it. They won't let you. It's legal to tap into it. They don't want you to tap into it, but they're also not going to check, and they don't really care, right? <laughs> yeah, because to them, commercially, it's like, oh, somebody's stealing the piss out of my toilet. It's like, right, okay, yeah. fine. Fill your yeah. boots. You, that's actually a good thing. I don't yeah, have to deal with the piss. piss. Yeah. So, in in the ensuing months, a couple kids started complaining about headaches. But you know, this is 1937. So uh, yeah, <laughs> they, no one gives no, a shit. No one cares. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have a headache? Uh, walk it off. <laughs> Here's some tobacco. Yeah. But yeah. what you need to do if you if you feel like you have a headache is go and play some more insanely aggressive high school football. Um, here's here's a wide variety of drugs which are completely legal at the uh, local <laughs> pharmacy. Yeah, just just like slam your head into another kid's head. Maybe we'll give you like a leather helmet or something, but probably not. Yeah, maybe yeah. Take some uh, take some morphine with cocaine mm -hmm. and like I don't know. Maybe there's like there there's some marijuana in there for a good measure. Um, it's cough syrup. Uh, it just happens to have morphine in it. Yes, have a Coca Cola with cocaine in it. <laughs> Hell yeah. There were two points of entry to the crawl space, right? There's one exterior door which is kept closed and locked, and there was one door inside the school in the shop classroom, right? Oh, no. <laughs> the industrial arts classroom. <laughs> and they stored lumber in the crawl space, right? Oh, good. Is that yeah. safe? Kindling, baby. <laughs> right? Probably fine. So it's Thursday, March 18th, 1937. Oh no. It's the afternoon. Everyone's excited for the final bell at 3.30 p.m., right? First through fourth grades have been let out early. There was a PTA meeting in the gym. Um, 500 students and 40 teachers were in the high school building. At 3.17 p.m. When you say a date, it's bad. When you say a time... <laughs> And it, as and it's as specific as three seventeen. <laughs> yeah, someone's face is gonna get melted off. Uh -huh. At three seventeen p.m., Lemmy R. Butler, the shop class instructor, turned on an electric sander. Okay, I assume everything went well, and there's no significance, and you're just gonna hit us with at three eighteen. Everything was well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no, this is what it looked like at three eighteen. Um, oh boy! <laughs> boom! Oh dear! Yeah, everything, everything. It, 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 the school done blowed up. Um, all the gas which had been accumulating in the crawl space for months, it, it months, it ignited and it exploded. Right? Witnesses claimed the whole building seemed to leap up into the air before falling back to earth and collapsing. Um, a two-ton concrete block was thrown 200 feet from the school and it crushed a 1937 Chevy. Um, oh, incredibly. No. This massive explosion created no fire, right? So the whole thing was over almost immediately. How is there no fire when there's like a gas pipeline going through it? Oh, I would assume there was like a very tiny fire right at the exit of the pipe. <laughs> just a single like sort of lit cigarette flame, and you're just like, oh, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to worry about that. It was a steel and concrete building. There wasn't much to burn. Mm. Apart from the children. There's a whole bunch of human flesh. Apart from yeah. the children, yeah. Children, very so, flammable, is, is one of the design flaws with them. The PTA meeting, you know, obviously came to an end right at that moment. <laughs> the PTA meeting rushes adjourned. out of the gym. Yeah, yeah meeting adjourned. Uh, they come out and they see the scene of utter devastation and calamity, right? Because the school building just wasn't there anymore. You know, parents started having to dig through the rubble to find their kids with their bare hands. A um, bunch of emergency services arrived on the scene since the explosion had been heard for four miles around. Uh, roughnecks were dismissed from oil fields to help, uh, you know, try and uh, assist in the recovery. Right. And, you know, this is this was a very, very bad disaster. Like I, lots and lots of people were just instantly killed. And it was a particularly dismembery type Oh no, that's a fucking no. adjective. Yeah, yes. that's not the word I really want to hear, but yeah, alright, we do a disaster <laughs> yes. podcast. Lots of these kids, you know, heads, arms, legs got blown off, right? And there's body parts everywhere. 
Um, even the bodies that remained intact were often disfigured beyond recognition. Right. Most, most, uh, most of them were identified through like personal items. Um, oh boy. Yeah, uh, so only an illegal had- natural gas tap can reduce an entire high school to a soup like homogenous in under a minute. Y- yes. Well under a minute, actually. <laughs> couple seconds um they had to they had to start bringing in emergency personnel um from as far away as like dallas right and another thing they had to bring in were a lot of um uh shit what's the word for someone who works in a mort in a, a lot more morticians a lot of coroner and bomber a yeah mortician yeah because yeah it just killed so many people just instantly like something like 295 students and teachers were killed in the explosion by the official count but a lot of the kids attending the school were children of, um, you know, sort of transient oil field workers, mostly from Mexico, right? So oh. Uh, oh, no. they, they, they may have not been counted in the uh, final count, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so also on the scene was Walter Cronkite. Oh, are you going to do uh, the voice? One, one of his first reporting assignments. Um, Shit, I don't know if I can do a Walter Cronkite voice. Liam, you do a Walter Cronkite? I don't do a Walter Cronkite. Does anybody do know Walter, Walter Cronkite? Cronkite? I don't think I've heard his... I just know who the guy is. Alright, if so, you can do a Walter Cronkite uh, impression at home, do this in your head while Justin reads the quote. Yeah. So, uh, Walter Cronkite said, much later, after he like reco- reported on stuff like World War II and Nuremberg and Kennedy's head exploding and all that stuff, he said, I did nothing in my studies nor in my life to prepare me for a story of the magnitude of that New London tragedy, nor has any story since that awful day equaled it. Well, I mean, it makes sense just by like sheer sort of death toll, right? Like nobody fucking blew up Kennedy's head well, 200 so times sequentially. The viciousness yeah. of children dying is always probably a little, yeah. a little harder yeah. to swallow. You know, you just show up and there's like just a mound of children's body parts that's usually not a good feeling no that's not a good day at work yeah yeah you just just like yeah try not to get too traumatized uh by the way here's good the dead kid zone <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i i don't know maybe maybe the uh some of the uh let's go, should i make a jeffrey epstein joke here i don't know <laughs> yes <laughs> go on I, I was i was like i don't know this is this 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 is something i'm sure a lot of the elites are now familiar with haven't been to Little St. James, but you know, I guess that's... <laughs> yeah, back in the old days, you had to like harvest your child body parts on mass like this. Manual, like, yeah. <laughs> Good lord, yeah, I see a lot, of, a lot of folks in there to start harvesting adrenochrome real quick. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why Jeffrey Epstein was like elevated. Was this provided the U.S.'s like strategic adrenochrome <laughs> supply, and it oh ran out God. sometime in like the nineties. <laughs> the Congress probably mandated to be sold off like the national <laughs> helium supply. They didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> um, yeah, here's another another picture of that surviving section of the school. Well, um, you say surviving, like surviving in quotes. Yeah, I'm uh, looking. I'm looking at those angles, and I don't like any of them. Uh, well, going to, say, to school nice, in that shell would be a fun time. Di- nice long vertical crack here. That's not good. Uh, the fact that there's oh, yeah, no that's building what's not from good, this point, <laughs> yeah, that, that's not good. Uh, this doesn't look good. Um, so yeah, um, but anyway, yeah. So folks, uh, you know, had to, you know, it killed a lot of kids. Everyone was extremely traumatized in the town. People tried to tended not to talk about it for a long time afterwards. Yeah, I mean, that like. Makes sense. And, and I mean, small town Texas, right? You you don't you pick up a yeah. football. Mm-hmm. So, um, only about 130 people in the school were uninjured at the end of this, right? Jesus Christ. You said there were 500 to start with, right? Yeah. So, like, those that's, like, that's like the entire PCA meeting, and like, uh. I don't I don't know how many kids were in each class, but I know that year's senior graduating class was like only 30 kids. Um, so... The cause of the disaster is found to be, incredibly, that the illegal tap into the gas line was faulty and leaked. 
who could have wow. predicted this? Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Us for the last hour? Yeah. <laughs> so, a bunch Ooh, of people brought... This is brought, a podcast anyway. Yeah. A bunch of people brought lawsuits against the school and the parade ga- uh, oil company, and the courts found that neither could be held liable. Oh, uh, uh, sweet. <laughs> Like the gas company, I guess, right? They didn't like that's just lax enforcement. Yeah, but they like, just had a yeah, sort school? of acknowledgement. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit confused as to why the school was not liable for this. Yeah, um, no, somebody just broke in and installed this gas tap. We're yeah, all looking it, for we, the guy who did this. this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, and we just happened to stop paying the gas bill at the same time. Total coincidence. Yeah, it's not a policy <laughs> around the thing. Um. Now, on the other hand, the superintendent of the school district was basically forced to resign or be lynched. Um, oh. So, you know, okay. lynching the bridge of my nose. Like, do you know how hard you've got to make me work to find a justified lynching in Texas in nineteen thirty fucking seven? It's pretty hard. Um, and then, and then, of course, uh, uh, Adolf Hitler sent his regards in a telegram. Jesus oh, cool. Christ. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I read a, I read a, 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 a report, I, I read a, a, a quote from one of the witnesses then, it's like, well, uh, no one knew Adolf Hitler was a bad guy back then. Yes, you uh, did! <laughs> in 1937? <laughs> yes, you Look, did. Uh, uh, yes, the United did. States wasn't sure which side of the war we were going to come in on at that point. <laughs> <laughs> So but there were some uh, restrictions afterwards, uh, regulations imposed as a result of this disaster in Texas. Like there were much stricter requirements for who could call themselves an engineer, right? And now residual gas from oil fields also had to be odorized. Yay? A- 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 yeah. Yay. So th- this, well, we haven't had a school explode since then, to my knowledge. So I guess no. it worked. I mean, there was that one guy who tried to like. Wasn't there a guy who dynamited a school? Um, yeah. Just as like a, an act of domestic terrorism, stroke mass murder. Yeah. And I, I think the the Columbine kids tried to blow up the school with like pipe bombs, but not successfully. Yeah, they, they, they brought like two bombs into the cafeteria. The bath they, school they, massacre is what you're thinking work. of, Alice. Thank and you. That was ten years before this. Ah, okay. Okay, so yeah, that was. Uh, I don't know. You can regulate away mass murders. Um, no, well, we're gonna try over the next four years, probably, <laughs> but not very hard. Oh uh, yes. So, um, anyway, and then they built a new school. Um, yeah. Here it is. It's still there, and they built this cenotaph for the victims. Um, and yeah, so this school is still there, still. A very wealthy school district because the oil wells are still there too. Um, I think I think they found in the rubble uh, a chalkboard which had written on it, um, "Oil and gas are Texas's greatest gifts from gifts from God." Oh no! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Yeah, I know writers who use subtext, and they're all cowards. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway. Moral of the story is, just 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 pay for your gas. Just uh, yeah, pay for your gas, and uh, oh. we really shouldn't have done the thing where we just like leapfrogged from mass hydroelectric power and stuff into coal, gas, oil. Shouldn't have done it. Bad idea. We didn't want to happen. Dude, That's like... right. So, Go back to splitting the atom, it's cool. Plus you can say but, anything about it in like a 1950s science voice. This is true, yes. Electricity, dude, cheap to meter. Man splits the atom! The power... power of atomics. <laughs> Wait, what's your job? I do atomics. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. an atomic scientist. Yeah, I, I guess maybe like something like this or worse would have happened if we'd gone to the Fallout timeline where everybody just has a small nuclear reactor powering everything. Yeah, that'd be tight. Yeah, that would know, be tight. I don't think that would cause an explosion, though. 
Mm. I guess I, I gotta you, scram my belt sander because yeah, you would just you would just melt a hole in the floor of the basement, a oh, radioactive yeah. hole. You'd have your own little elephant. It'd be a baby elephant's foot. Aw, plus you could do the <laughs> China syndrome, which is how oh, yeah. you'd have to do school exchanges. Just put a kid do, in the in the in the hole. You do the Texas syndrome. That's right. Mm -hmm. What's the antipode yeah. of uh, of Texas? What's what's you, on the you, other side of the probably ocean, but like. You spell a RC cola on the control panel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is, is that is that is that a Texas thing or is that that's more of a yeah? What's a Texas South thing? thing? What's, a, what's Texas a Texas soda cola? thing? Do they call it? Do they call it Dr. soda? Or do they call it pop? What a burger! It's uh, like the, the, the antipode of Texas Puckies. is is probably going to be somewhere like the the Cocos Islands. I, so. I always wanted to go to a Bucky's. I've never been to Texas. That's definitely something I need well, to we'll do. We'll go to Texas. When we how, go are you, to how are you feeling about a Whataburger? I love Whataburger. I've never, I've never been to Whataburger. I've never been to Texas. I never. I've never been to H E B. Um, what? Yeah. I too um, never been to Texas, so we got to do a live show there. We got to go to uh, we got to go to Dallas, right. drive around in an open top car. All right, te Texas fans, um, f figure out where we can do a live show when COVID is well, over. We're allowed to do that again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll all just stand in the sixth floor window of the Texas Book Depository and just we yell down at Dealey <laughs> Plaza. So we wind up in uh, I don't know, just some just some absurdly tiny town in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I love to go to fucking New Serbia. I like, I like all the Texas towns have like lots of brick streets. Mm. So Those are cool. stolen. I mean, the other so thing about us going to Texas is that I would die. And not like of any of the like people or wildlife, but because like when it gets above about 20 degrees Celsius, I just sort of die. Yeah, you're a pathetic little baby. Yeah, exactly. That's why <laughs> that's why I live here and what's left of the Arctic Circle. Um so yeah, no. So that's going to be good. I'm just going to like I'm just going to be rolling around in like an air conditioned like zorb or something. It's about to say all of Texas is air conditioned. There's like no it's basically Saudi Arabia. Um <laughs> <laughs> Saudi Arabia except they get mad at you for wearing a burqa. Uh yeah, that's true. It's like uh uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's the little things that set these places apart, otherwise they're basically all the same. <laughs> well, anyway, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. They have a Safety Third about biking. Oh, cool. I thought this so, was going to be more like organic chemistry for a second. <laughs> so this person wrote hello i thought i'd submit a safety third it's Thank not you. specifically about the workplace it's fine but it is definitely a time when my personal responsibility did not save me from an accident that's what we like to hear or well not but during lockdown last year i decided to finally purchase a bicycle in order to be able to stay mobile and keep some resemblance of sanity. Good Huge idea. Huge mistake. I keep trying to, I like, I keep wanting to do this, and then I look outside and see like a, a an articulated truck just merge across two lanes of traffic across a bike lane, and then I'm just like, yeah, better not. Bike infrastructure in the British Isles is just absurdly bad. I've seen pictures of it. I'm like. But how, how, do you, how do you somehow do this worse than us in the United States? Like, it, it, well, this it, is the it, thing we love: death and misery. Apparently, they got you right across the channel. You can go look Fuck at what up. they do and just Fuck do up. that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. On the one hand, if I wanted to learn to ride a bike, the thing for me to do is to fucking move to Amsterdam, grow my hair down to like ass length. Uh, just start cycling everywhere on a skirt, and like I, I've got one of those step-through bike frames too, and it's all oh, yeah. very aesthetic and everything. And crucially, I don't get hit by a truck. But I don't live there. I live in Glasgow, where I will get hit by a truck. You have to, you have to develop Sounds like a personal an accent problem. too. <laughs> you, I know this code will kill you. you can I ride the bicycle everywhere. Stand on a <laughs> honk. <laughs> Not you specifically, but oh, look at our cycling infrastructure. Please don't look at the Africans we're keeping in cages. Ah. <laughs> well, look, it's anyone, not the racist thing. 
anywhere less like racist where they come than from. Scotland. And people, people, every time I say this, people are like, no, 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 you don't understand how racist Europe is. And it's like, no, I think I do. You don't understand how racist Britain is. How can uh, you pause? Do you, you're like, whatever, the 14th best country in Europe. What is there to be racist about? Oh, Jesus, yeah, it's, it's terrible here. Just imagining, like, the racism I Olympics hate your now. dumb pedophile island. It is the worst place on earth. I hate it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna try and get. Can I get like asylum in Philadelphia for like? Sure. <laughs> that's that's right. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Apl applying to my local Philadelphia consulate. Yeah, there's just a just a, a man there asleep in a pile of hoagies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want a sign? Yeah, what's that? Let me just. We'll just get the application ready. Vomiting up lager, just like yeah. <laughs> I right, who's your favorite football? You Go said birds. birds. Okay, Go yeah, birds. yeah, you're in. Yeah, you can, you're gonna be on the 2700 block of Morris. You're gonna be living with nine other people. I hope you know about the Phillies. Go, go birds, vomiting again. I, lo I love to move in with Mike, 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 and Mike. <laughs> And Mike, but we don't talk about they, him. They don't care that you're trans, but you better start understanding the Eagles O-line situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I'll just steal all of the jokes you told me about it. So I'll just be like, yeah, I'm pretty certain I was on the Eagles O-line for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and the mics just times. fucking love it. Yeah. First first uh, trans football player That's in the right. NFL. I know, it's a big, big milestone. Congrats, Alice. <laughs> Good job, Thank Alice. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I live in the beautiful Manchester suburb of Salford. Salford. Known, Salford. Who known gives for... a shit? Shut up, pedophile island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, known, fuck it, Salford. Known for Media City, Coronation Street, and organized crime. That is true. One of the few places in the UK where they have shootings. Like, I was say, you guys do organized yeah. crime? A little bit. Like, there's a couple, like, there's London, Nottingham used to be a little bit, and then, like, the sort of rougher bits of Manchester do occasionally have, like, actual shootings with guns Sweet. and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Life yeah, the, the place uh, up a bit. It's the uh, Piranha Brothers, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Glasgow had a couple, not, not like pretty close to where I live, which tells you about how much money I'm making off of the podcast. That I'll just be like, oh, yeah, a guy just fucking got shot at the traffic lights down the street from me. Oh, yeah, that, happens around, to, that happens in my neighborhood all the time. Yeah. The donut shop by me gets yeah, robbed twice a, a month. Well, we had a shooting down the street this morning. I have, well, I'm sure that's more of a Philly. If you if you if you don't get involved in that stuff, nothing happens to That's you. Right. I know it, it's just it, it feels it feels more salient in a country where like not everybody has guns and they're kind of harder to get because like it, it, if you want to shoot someone in this country, you've really got to want to shoot them. You know, you can't just like do it because you feel like it. <laughs> suppose suppose your mayor was like, hmm, you know, I feel like shooting someone today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picky about who. I just think I'll shoot someone. Isn't that what a mass shooting is? Mm. No, that's like I want to shoot a lot of people. I'm uh, thinking I just I want guess to shoot so. like one person randomly. You know? Well, I guess then you're like the 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 Washington D.C. sniper or something. Oh, I remember that because I I was in elementary school for that. And recess was cancelled for four months. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like I I I remember they tried to do some like precautions for like, oh, we can't we can't have the kids walking outside to get to the cars because someone will shoot them, but we can't actually do anything about that. Wow. So it's like I I I I I must have been awful like trying to I guess, uh, uh, what's the word? <laughs> just trying to get out of a minivan and into the high school like it's fucking Omaha Beach. <laughs> just <laughs> just yeah. serpentining oh, around. That's kind of what it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's got a field telephone. Uh, pick you up at 3.30, go, go, go! <laughs> I, love to get, I love to get dropped off in dog sector and have to move from wire obstacles to wire obstacles to get the to the fucking... your teachers have pillboxes. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to storm into arts class with your paintbrush like painting other kids red to signify they're down. <laughs> yeah, it's just like three machine gun nests around the uh, field. Um, yeah, we got we got, we got air aircraft support. We got a uh, check hedgehogs where the soccer goals used to be. <laughs> we got artillery. We can get artillery on scene. 
<laughs> Artillery is so fucking cool. Yes. I was cycling down the road one day towards oh, the mistake. end of lockdown one. Oh, lockdown one. Picked, Remember that? Traffic levels had picked up somewhat, but I had been mostly fine. However, my luck would change as I navigated the roundabout. So, many numtots and other folks seem to love the roundabout, mm -hmm. despite its inherently car-oriented nature. Personally, I think they're ugly space-hogging circles of death, which is the correct opinion. <laughs> that force pedestrians to orbit around them, making journey times longer. But I also wish to contend the other proposed benefit, which is safety. Yeah, nobody knows is, how to fucking drive around a roundabout. Like, everybody just panics and occasionally kills a cyclist. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, oh shit, I, I have to go around a circle? I can't do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna veer into the nearest pedestrian I yeah, can find. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the Kelly Square theory of traffic management. What's which that? is just Kelly Square is an intersection in Worcester Mass. Worcester Mass. Worcester Mass. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it is and, as close to anarchism as you will get in the United States. I was about to say, it's just, <laughs> just six streets intersect with each other, and there's no signage of any kind. There's, there's like stop uh, there's signs. There's a section like that in uh, in Milford, Mass, too, where like just three, like not even three, it's like five roads all run into each other. And you're just like, all right, fucking pray to Jesus, let's do this. <laughs> like the um, the, the, there's only one example I can think of in Europe that's like that, and oh, weirdly, God damn, it's Arc de Triomphe. Yes, it's the fucking yeah, Arc de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. How did Triomphe you know I was no going to say that? Control. It is yeah. a chaos <laughs> zone. I've been to France. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually just converted Kelly Square into sort of dog bone roundabout. Yeah, they ruined thing. it. I was yeah. like, this well, they've been talking about this fucking is... pedestrianizing the Champs Elysees, so maybe this is the end that. of the the end of the road for like terrible traffic anarchy. Oh, the Par Paris mayor is like just, just hates Hidalgo? cars. It's one, oh, yeah. yeah. And Hidalgo is like is 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 like really aggressive about taking cars off streets. It's great. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. The, the Gilets Jaunes don't like her. Uh, <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no freeway for you. <laughs> you say Gilets Jaunes. Gilets Jaunes. Gilles yeah. Yeah. Gilles 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 Jaunes. Jaunes. Joan. It's fine. It's Joan. fine. It's it's Joan. 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 It's Joan. It's a Joan. Joan. Yeller vests. Yeller yeah. vests. Yeller, 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 yeller vests. vests. Oh, yeah, yeller. Old yeller vest. Old yeller. <laughs> so, That's what they call me. High vis baz. <laughs> the idea is roundabouts get road users to slow down and if no, any don't. collisions do occur, they, don't. they occur at lower speeds and more agreeable angles, right? <laughs> no. Weirder okay. angles. Okay. However, even a low-speed collision can prove danger dangerous for vulnerable road users, such as cyclists and pedestrians. Sure. So, as illustrated, see here, man on bicycle, person on bicycle. Um, I was riding along and intended to take the second exit, right? Mm -hmm. I pulled onto the roundabout fine, making sure to yield the traffic from my right. However, as I was passing the first exit, I noticed something odd. The car that was next to me appeared to be moving forwards. Oh Surely he had seen me, right? It was broad daylight, my bike was covered in ref retro reflectors, and uh, the next thought I had was, oh no. <laughs> yeah, it's always one thing, you're, you're, you're riding around on the street and you, lo you start looking at a, a car doing something, you, like, you start getting suspicious, and you're like, is this guy going to murder me? I'm going to die. <laughs> Am I about to be <laughs> murdered? And nine times out of ten, the answer is no, thank God. Um, <laughs> so, his bonnet hit, hit my left leg. Bonnet is a hood, if you're in America. Um, and for a short period of time, both me and my bike were riding on top of it. <laughs> oh, no. Once he realized there was a person on top of his car, he slammed on the brakes, sending me and the bike flying across the roundabout. Fortunately, when I landed, I did not hit my head nor any other important part of my body. I spent a good 15 to 20 seconds lying on the road, checking for any pain in my spine so I'd be safe to move. Our, our correspondent has a different idea of important as I do. To me, they're kind of all important. <clears throat> With the help 
of fellow passersby, I got up and dragged my bike to the side of the road. Fortunately, the driver did stop and was apologetic. Somehow, he did not see me while I was right in front of him in broad daylight. I I called the police to ask what to do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't call the don't, cops don't, don't call the cops yeah they told <laughs> they told me to exchange insurance and contact details oh well, I had- we're back to the the thesis that milo and i develop on the youtube zone that british cops and american cops are both terrible and they'll both brutalize you but british ones hate doing work more so they'll just kind yes. of where they can get out of it they'll just be like oh, yeah just say it's changed there wasn't it <laughs> Once I had limped with my bike back home, I decided to get in contact with my doctors to see if I should get checked out. They told me to get in touch with NHS 111. That's like the um, non urgent advice line. Ah. Uh, you just get advice on anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Doc, I, I really have like this girl, and I don't know what to do. The, the last time, the last time I called NHS one 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 was uh, one of my teeth fucking exploded, uh, mm. and, and so I called them um, like. And you've been b- biting into any natural gas lines? <laughs> yeah, <good question. laughs> barely. I, I called them like barely able to talk, and they were like, "Yeah, no, just they made an appointment for me at the dental hospital, so that was cool, good for them." But uh, yeah, no, in general, if you call them for anything other than your teeth having exploded, uh, they're kind of like, take two painkillers and like uh, call your GP in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Walk, walk it off. Yeah. <laughs> rub some dirt in it, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the rub some dirt in it, uh, like hotline, yeah. <laughs> Do we just, uh, we, we have a hotline for you just to receive abuse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was told I would either need to take an ambulance or get family or friends to give me a lift to A and E. Accident and emergency. Emergency uh, room. She told me expressly not to take a taxi or Uber. Uh, After being why? told I don't know. <laughs> That's... After being told it would be a five hour wait for the ambulance, I took mm-hmm. an Uber to the hospital. Cancelled. Yeah, cancelled again. <laughs> Damn. Fortunately, I only had bruising on the leg and some light whiplash. Some this light whiplash? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. This would clear itself up within a couple of weeks. I managed to get the bike repaired within my insurance policy as the damage was not too severe. Just some bent pedals and a messed up derailleur. I also learned an important lesson that day. The highway code is wrong, and you should ride on the pavement to avoid being turned into viscera on a death circle. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, There's... fuck cycling in the road, man. I, 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 we could do a whole episode on that. We might do a whole episode on that at some point. Get Kate back on. Yeah, I know, right? So, but, you know, obviously first, we're going to do an episode on... The Tacoma, the Tacoma Narrows, Narrows Bridge, Bridge disaster. Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Man, imagine if you had been cycling across that. I oh, never... you and the dog just eating it together. <laughs> just on maybe, the way down, yeah. Maybe you could have saved the dog. Oh, Well, man, we walked out onto the bridge to save the dog. The dog refused to get out of the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> dog was like, no, it's scary out there. I'm going to stay in the car. Oh, oh mm. shit. So, yeah, the dog was. Uh, well, not now smart. I'm sad about that dog. <laughs> wow, we got through this. We, we fucking say, went, yeah. It, just because I put this episode together in like an hour and a half. Yeah, you got to do a half ass <laughs> job more often. We'll get through <laughs> these faster. <laughs> yeah, but let, let, me, let me do a worse job so the episodes are better. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, I should, I, should be, I should be extremely hungover for eight out of 12 hours I'm awake more often. <laughs> <laughs> I know I shouldn't do that because it sucks. I get really bad hangovers. Yeah, um, well, can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Everybody, waiting until I hit the wrong side of thirty, and then it's just going to be uh, unable to drink a Oz drop of tw- alcohol. Oz, aren't you like twenty seven? How old are you? Uh, twenty seven. Yeah, you turned twenty eight in two months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, congratulations. Right? Se- second birthday in lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, soon you will know my pain of being 28 years old and just, uh, yeah, no. Uh, it's no bad. Talking of which, I'd like to wish 
my girlfriend's mom uh, a very happy 50th birthday tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. I'm thinking about just writing this year off. Just like yeah, not uh, counting it yeah, towards my age. You know, because it, it's like, no, this, this, was, this sucks. They yeah. should they should fucking just give you a mulligan on the whole year, like for everything. Uh aging, uh health, tax, fuck it. Just yes. you name they it. Should, just they 20, give, 2020 they did not exist. Didn't happen. I demand a refund. Yeah. <laughs> cancel 2020. If we can do anything with cancel culture, we must cancel last year. Yes. I mean it'd be like it it'd be just like impeaching Trump after he's out of office. <laughs> yeah, um, that's but... right. It sends a message. <laughs> it's not pointless. So that, so pointless. that the next years know not to pull that shit with us. They legally declare 2020 to have not happened, and then Trump retakes office. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would be extremely funny. <laughs> yeah, we finally found out what the storm is going to be. Yeah. Storm is... Um, I'm um, not redoing it. Retroactive. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> so... Do we have any commercials before we go? Uh, listen to Trash Future. Listen to a forthcoming podcast that I will be starting, hopefully, um, in February. There's going to be a whole new podcast if you want more Alice content, because I don't oh make boy. enough money off of these. Oh boy. What is it all? Any, what is uh, it it's going gonna, it's gonna to be me, uh, my friend Devon on Earth, and uh, Ollie from Philosophy Tube are going to be talking about James Bond movies. Oh, oh so that bad. sounds Hell fun. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah, I like that. Oh, you gotta we, come we're gonna on. have to have us on, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, watch uh, this space. Yes, watch watch the space. Hold the space. Keep Holding watching space. the skies, etc., etc., etc. Look out for the, the, the James Bond signal in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, I think that was the podcast. Good podcast. Good podcast. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, bye, everybody. Yeah, bye, everyone. Wow, we did it. We did a podcast. We did. You know what I miss is that it used to say end of slideshow, click to exit. Oh, oh, it yeah. doesn't do that anymore. No, it just fucking stops, right? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs>